Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalinga Engineering College, Koyil Vilni. I am happy to meet you again in the solution and discussion on UPSC Engineering Service Examination Question Paper in Mechanical Engineering Subject in the topic Air Compressor. This is lecture number 20. The first question is from 2016 question paper. In a two-stage reciprocating air compressor with a suction pressure of 2 bar and delivery pressure of 8 bar, the ideal intercooler pressure will be. So, there are four options given. You go through the four options. The answer to the question, the intermediate, intermediate pressure P2 equal to square root of P1 P3. So, it is P1 P3 to the power 0 0.5. P1 is the suction pressure, P3 is the delivery pressure. P2 is the intermediate pressure, pressure between high pressure, low pressure cylinder and the high pressure cylinder. So, substituting numerical value is 2 into 8 to the power 0 0.5, 16 to the power 0 0.5 equal to 4 bar. So, the answer is 4 bar. The next question from 2020 question paper, a single acting two stage air compressor deals with 4 meter cube per minute of air at 1.013 bar and 50 degree Celsius with a speed of 250 rpm. The delivery pressure is 80 bar. If the intercooling is complete, the intermediate pressure after the first stage will be. There are four options given. So, look at the four options. The answer to the question, the similar type of question uh, in the previous uh, example, the inter intermediate pressure P2 equal to again P1 P3 to the power 0 0.5 which is 1.013 into 80 to the power 0 0.5 equal to 9 bar. So, the answer is 9 bar. The next question from 2019 question paper, a air, a air compressor delivers 4 meter cube of air having a mass of 5 kg. The specific weight and specific volume of air being delivered will be nearly. There are four options given 12.3 newtons per meter cube and 0 0.8 meter cube per kilogram, 14.6 newtons newton per meter cube and 0 0.4 meter cube per kilogram, 12.3 newtons per meter cube and 0 0.5 meter cube per kilogram, 14.6 newton per meter cube and 0 0.8 meter cube per kilogram. So, we have to calculate. So, we are given volume 4 meter cube and mass 5 kilogram, the specific weight of the air W equal to mg by V. So, mg is the weight of the air divided by the volume, specific weight equal to weight divided by volume. So, 5 into 9.81 divided by 4 equal to 12.3 newtons per meter cube and specific volume V, small v equal to capital V by m, so volume by mass. So, 4 divided by 5 equal to 0 0.8 meter cube per kilogram. So, the correct option is option A. So, 12.3 newtons per meter cube and the uh, specific volume is 0 0.8 meter cube per kilogram. The next question to, from 2015 question paper, in an axial flow compressor, the ratio of pressure in the rotor blade to the pressure rise in the compressor in one stage is known as work factor, slip factor, degree of reaction and pressure coefficient. So, the uh, correct answer is degree of reaction which is defined as pressure rise in the rotor divided by pressure rise in the stage. So, there are rotor blade, stator blade. So, degree of reaction is pressure rise in the rotor divided by pressure rise in the stage which includes the rotor and the stator. Next question from 2016 question paper, the ratio of static enthalpy rise in the rotor to the static enthalpy rise in the stage of an axial compressor is defined as power input factor, flow coefficient, temperature coefficient, degree of reaction. So, once again the answer is degree of reaction. So, either the pressure rise or the enthalpy rise, so both are the same, degree of reaction equal to static enthalpy rise in the rotor divided by static enthalpy rise in the stage or sometimes it is also static pressure rise in the rotor divided by static pressure rise in the stage because for air enthalpy equal to delta H equal to delta P by rho. So, substituting that you will get uh, static pressure rise, uh, static enthalpy rise equal to static pressure rise. Next question from 2016 question paper, 
consider the following statement. The compression process in a centrifugal compressor is comparable with, there are four op two options, reversible and adiabatic, two irreversible and adiabatic, which of the statement, above statement is or is or are correct. So, the centrifugal compressor, the process is, it is irreversible adiabatic, option two. Uh, option D is the correct answer. Two statement two is the correct statement. In a centrifugal compressor, it is irreversible and adiabatic compression process. Next question, again from 2015 question paper. In a centrifugal compressor, an increase in speed at a given pressure ratio causes increase in flow and increase in efficiency, increase in flow and decrease in efficiency. Increase in flow and decrease in efficiency. So, decrease in flow and decrease in efficiency. Decrease in flow and increase in efficiency. So, the correct answer is increasing the speed will increase the flow rate, but it will decrease the efficiency in a centrifugal compressor. The next question from 2015 question paper. What is the correct sequence of sequence in increasing order of air, air handling or compressing machine based on the pressure ratio? So, the air blower, axial flow fan, centrifugal compressor, reciprocating compressor, they are given in a staggered manner. Second option, axial flow fan, centrifugal compressor, air blower and reciprocating compressor. The four machines are jumbled here. We will look at the pressure ratio. The pressure ratio of axial flow fan is up to 1.1 pressure ratio. Air blower, it is between 1.1 to 1.2. Centrifugal compressor, it is from 1.2 to 2. For reciprocating compressor, it is of greater than 2. The pressure ratio is greater than 2. So, we have to arrange the compressor, compressing machines in the increasing order of pressure ratio. So, the increasing order is axial flow fan, axial blower, centrifugal compressor and then reciprocating compressor. So, the correct option is option D. So, in the option D, it is given axial flow fan, air blower, centrifugal compressor and reciprocating compressor. Next question from 2019 question paper. In centrifugal compressor, there exists loss of energy due to mismatch of direction of relative velocity of the fluid at the inlet with the inlet blade angle. The loss is known as frictional loss, incident loss, clearance loss and leakage loss. So, we define the different losses. The loss due to mismatch of direction of relative velocity of the fluid velocity at inlet is with inlet blade angle is known as incident loss. The frictional loss is due to the friction between flowing fluid and the part of the compressor such as the blade. The clearance loss is due to the clearance between impeller tip and the casing and the leakage loss occurs in the soft clearance space. So, the loss which is given here is incident loss because of the mismatch of the direction of relative velocity of the fluid at inlet with a blade angle. The next question from 2015 question paper, the head developed is maximum keeping other parameters such as rotor diameter, speed, width, inlet angle etcetera constant for a centrifugal compressor with a rotor with a backward curved blade, rotor with a forward curved blade, rotor with a radial blade all the above. So, the head developed is maximum for a higher head. So, we have to use rotor with the forward curved blade. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, these are all three different types of impeller. Backward curved blade where the blades are curved in the left side. So, the beta is less than 90. This is radial blade. The outlet angle beta is 90. This is forward curved blade. The outlet angle is greater than 90. And there is a comparison graph. The mass flow rate with the head rise. So, for the forward curved blade, the head is increasing. So, if you want a higher head, if you want the higher head, we have to use the forward curved blade. When you want a higher efficiency, we have to use the backward curved blade. The next question from 2014 question paper, consider the following statements. Stalling is the separation of flow from the blade surface. Surging leads to physical damage due to the impact load and high frequency vibration. Mass flow rate is minimum if choking occurs. Which of the above statements are correct? So, the 1 and 2, stalling is a separation of the flow from the blade surface, that is the true statement. Surging leads to, surging, it occurs, uh, surging causes the vibration of the machine, 
so which causes the damage physical damage uh, to the machine so mass flow rate is minimum if choking occurs their statement is not correct so the correct statements are uh, one and two surging next question 2015 question paper surging is a phenomenon of steady periodic reverse reverse to flow and steady periodic reverse to flow and steady periodic uniform flow one dimensional steady uniform flow so this is surging is unsteady periodic and reversed flow condition in dynamic in dynamic compression surging is complete breakdown of the flow due to the periodic reversal of the flow the reversal of reversal flow occurs due to the closure of delivery valve below the operating pressure ratio so the answer is option b it is unsteady periodic and reversed type of flow the next question from 2014 question paper what is the power required to drive a centrifugal compressor centrifugal air compressor when the impeller diameter is 0.45 meter and the speed equal to 7200 rpm there are four options given so we'll calculate the peripheral speed of the centrifugal compressor u equal to pi dn by 60 so pi into 0.45 into 7200 by 60 equal to 169.56 meters per second for the centrifugal compressor the power required to drive the compressor p equal to u square peripheral speed to the power 2 so 169.56 square equal to 28750 watts per kilogram per second which is 28.75 kilowatts per kilogram per second so the answer is 28.78 kilo kilowatts per kilogram per second so per kilo per uh, uh, unit mass flow rate so kilowatt per unit mass flow rate The next question from 2019 question paper. So a centrifugal compressor develops a pressure ratio of five, and the air consumption is consumption of 30 kilograms per second. The inlet temperature and the pressure are 50 degrees Celsius and one bar respectively. For an isothermal efficiency of 0.85, the power required to power required by the compressor will be nearly. There are four options given. So the correct answer is 5,964 kilowatts. so we'll see how in the next slide so the exit temperature of the air from the given data we calculate the exit temperature of the air t2 equal to t1 into p2 by p1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma which is 288 into 5 to the power 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4 equal to 456.1 kelvin for isothermal work work input w isothermal equal to mcp into t2 minus t1 which is 30 into 1.005 Into 456.1 minus 288 equal to 5068.2 kilowatts. So the actual work input equal to isothermal work divided by the isothermal efficiency. So 5068.2 divided by 0.85 equal to 5962.6 kilowatts. So this is the answer to the question. Actual work input equal to 5962.6 kilowatts. The next question from 2019 question paper. An air compressor compresses atmospheric air at 0.1 mega pascal and 27 degrees Celsius by 10 times of the air inlet pressure. During compression, heat loss to the surrounding is estimated to be 5 percentage of the compression work. Air enters the compressor with a velocity of 40 meters per second and leaves at 100 meters per second. The inlet and exit cross-sectional area are 100 centimeters square and 20 centimeters square. The temperature of the air at inlet from the compressor will be. Uh, the uh, temperature of air at the exit from the compressor will be. There are four options given. The correct answer is 1498 Kelvin. The exit temperature is 1498 Kelvin. So we will see how in the next slide. So we calculate the parameter inlet pressure 0.1 mega pascal, exit pressure 1 mega pascal, inlet temperature T1 300 Kelvin, inlet flow rate V1 equal to A1 into V1, inlet flow rate volume flow rate equal to area into velocity. 0.01 into 40 equal to 0.4 meter cube per second. Exit flow rate volume equal to V2 equal to A2 into velocity, which is 0.002 into 100 equal to 0.2 meter cube per kilogram. So temperature T2 equal to T1 into P1 V1 divided by P2 V2. Substituting 300 into 1 into 0.2 divided by 0.1 into 0.4 equal to 1500 Kelvin. So the answer is 1400 500 Kelvin. So we stop here. So these are all the books I have written in mechanical engineering subject, and I upload the uploaded the video lectures of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. You subscribe the channel, use the videos for your better learning. 
Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. You can contact me for any clarification on the subject using mail ID or WhatsApp number. So, we will meet again with another video lecture in the solution of engineering service examination questions. Until then, bye.